Hey guys, Richard here with E-Bike Reviews and Adventures. Today we're going to take a look at the Freedair Sega, and I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to tell you those things which I like, a couple of things I don't care for. Hey, let's get into the video. Okay, first of all, thanks to uh, Freedair for sending us this great e-bike right here so we can check it out. Now, all this started when, um, you know, Freedair sent us the bike and they shipped it to us. And I want to talk to you just a little bit about that because it is a little different. Uh, this bike is a little oversized the way it's packaged. And so it did not arrive via UPS or FedEx. In fact, it had to be shipped by a freight company, which is not a big deal. Some bigger bikes, uh, you know, they have to be shipped by freight. But this particular one, uh, you know, they sent it freight and it went to a furniture store uh, in about an hour from me. And then I had to wait for that furniture store to make a delivery in my area in order to deliver the bike. So it actually took about three weeks for me to, to get the bike from the time that they shipped it. So uh, just be aware of that. Now, the packaging on this bike was amazing, okay? Uh, best packaging I have seen of any bike. In fact, it was probably a little too much packaging because it does create a lot of waste. But, you know, it's, <laughs> there's no problems with the bike, that's for sure. There's, you don't have to worry about anything getting damaged. Um, but because of the packaging that they used, the way they had everything there, that's what caused the bike to be a little oversized and UPS FedEx wouldn't take it, okay? Now the company did tell me that they're going to make some adjustments there and they will be redoing the packaging here soon. So hopefully FedEx and UPS will take it in the future. Now, we've had this bike for a little while and uh, we had a chance to get out and get familiar with it. Let's go ahead and jump in and we're gonna take a look at some of these specs. It does have a Bafang 750 watt motor back here and it's fairly quiet. You'll see that uh, when uh, we get to the riding portion of this video. It does have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes up here on the front, which we like. I believe those are 160 millimeter, but I could be wrong. They're not stamped. I'll try to find that information and stick it up on the screen for you. Uh, this bike does have a 20 amp hour battery and it's tucked away in the down tube right here. Nice and tight. Moving back up here to the front, we do have Kenda tires. And I want to talk about these for a second because these are some really aggressive Kenda tires. I mean, those got some serious knobs on it compared to some other Kendas that I've seen, but that just makes this bike real grippy on the surface so you can ride it on road or off road. It does have some suspension fork here that does have the lockout adjustment so you can soften it or make it a little more firm, whichever your riding pleasure is. Up here in the front, we do have a connection for a basket and we do have a working front headlight. Now let's take a look right here because all this wiring is wrapped real nice. I always like to see that. So things are looking good up here. Let's move them down on this side of the bike right here. This is a mid-step bike. This is the Sega. It does come in a uh, step-through version as well. Moving towards the back here, we do have a rack back here attached already. Hey guys, just for your information, the rack and fenders do not come with this bike. So you will have to purchase those separately. It's a smaller sized rack, but it looks nice. It's got that wood grain on it. So you can strap some things down right there. Back down here, we do have a turning derailleur on the seven speed. And that does have a derailleur guard, which is nice to have. The fenders are aluminum. So no cheap plastic there. Moving up here, let's talk about the saddle. The saddle is not very comfortable at all. In my opinion, it's like most saddles you get with, uh, with e-bikes. They're all pretty much the same. They're really hard and firm. So that could have been a little bit better. So just plan on changing that out. We do have a bigger size seat post clamp here. So it's easy to make adjustments for that seat for multiple riders, different heights. All right, now there's two other features on this bike that I really like. And one is the torque sensor. I can tell you the torque sensor does work pretty well. So it makes a nice comfortable ride if you like getting some exercise and you're out on the road. And another feature that we'll talk about here in a moment is the app. This is a app connected bike and the phone app is quite extensive as far as uh, the things that you can do with it. So we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and look up here into the cockpit area. Now over here on the left, we do have this rubber uh, hand grips, which are really nice. I like those. I like the palm rest. I like that they're locking so you can lock them in so they're not going to move at all. We've got a really nice button pad here too. Uh, you've got your up and down pass levels, you've got your headlights, you've got your information, and you've got your power button. Now this thing likes to power off after about five minutes. And I think that's a 
something that might be able to adjust in the settings. I'm not real sure. But there's our display. Get back over here. It does come with a bell. Now we'll take a look at the display here. So the display is colorful. Uh, it's nice. It's something that you can easily read. Moving over here, we do have the seven-speed Shimano shifter that you see on all e-bikes. We do have a thumb throttle on this side as well. Okay, and another thing about the display right here is that you do have three levels of pedal assist, which is kind of kind of low, but you know when you're talking about a torque sensor bike, which this does have, uh, you know it's not as necessary to have five levels of pedal assist or seven levels like some bikes come, because really what's going to happen is you're just going to get out of the bike what you're putting into the bike, because it feels like a traditional bike when you're riding it. You got to put effort into it in order to get a response out of the bike. And I have found that uh, three levels of pedal assist work just fine, uh, so I don't necessarily feel like uh, we're missing out on anything there. All right, let's take a closer look at the app here. So when you get the app, you'll have to download it, you'll have to register, and then you have to connect the bike, which is fairly easy to do. Uh, they will send you a verification code to your phone and to your email uh, just to verify and get everything connected there, but uh, just expect that. So when you open up the app, it kind of opens up into a screen like this right here. And you have to click on this little bike icon over here, which is kind of subdued and kind of hard to see. But that tells you right there, your serial number, it's going to go ahead and connect. This kind of feature here says, uh, find my bike, so you can locate your bike. So, hey, bam, right there it is. I'm not going to show you where I'm at. Uh, but it does work. So, uh, it's got built-in GPS. So, if anybody takes your bike, uh, you'll be able to find it. If you're late out, late out one night on a Friday night and forget where you park your bike, uh, the next day you can always find your bike and remember where it is that you parked it. So those kind of things are kind of cool. It does have a bike detection feature here. Now this is where you get into the maintenance feature of this bike. So you can go bike detection. And it will tell you the status of different components here. Now this is the first bike I've seen that has this feature built in. But for instance, we can click on the controller. And it's going to tell us, yeah, controller looks good. Everything's working fine. And the brake lever. And with the brake lever, it says you need to apply the brakes a couple of times. So I'm doing that. And it comes up with a message saying, yep, brakes seem to be working fine. Same thing with the throttle. It says, yep, everything's working fine with the throttle. The pedal sensor. Pedal sensor, you need to be moving. And we're not going to do that right now, so I'm going to cancel that. Also, the hub motor. Yep, it's saying everything seems good with the hub motor. And then, of course... Then, of course, the speed sensor is last over here, and I believe it wants the bike to be moving, and uh, so we're not going to do that, but it'll tell you what the status is of the sensor. So, really nice maintenance things here. So, if you start having trouble with the bike or something, uh, you can always pull that up first and maybe do some self-diagnosing to see what's going on. Now, inside the app, you have a couple other features here that we like. So, let's go ahead and hit the go button. It brings it up right here, so you can see what your speed is. It's got a uh, it's even got a little compass here so you can see what direction that you're you're pointing in tells you your battery status tells you your pedal assist settings you know how fast you're going you can turn on the headlight if you want to uh, just a, a lot of nice features here it's even got a map over here you can click on and it kind of tells you hey this is the general area this is what's around you in case you're looking for something you can go out there and find it uh, you know so it's I mean it's got a lot of stuff built into the app which is which is pretty nice now, we'll tell you that this is supposed to have some uh, uh, pop-up notifications and things. I haven't really found that. I'm not sure where it is in the app. Um, and it's also supposed to have... It's supposed to have a anti-theft device. And, and I think what that does is just where we lock out the bike, where we can lock and unlock it. I keep having to connect to the bike because it keeps disconnecting. But there it is. You can lock it or unlock it. Um... Yeah, I thought I had some type of alarm system, but, you know, I might be wrong. I have to go back and look because there's nothing in the app that tells me how to do that. It's not easy to find, so I'm not sure there. Let's get this thing out on the road and uh, do some riding with it and tell you all about my experience there. Get this camera adjusted. All right, so... So the motor is about average as far as the, the noise level, so nothing too annoying there. Uh, it's got good response out of the throttle in order to kind of get us going. 
and we're going to get out here on the street and get going. Now, I'll tell you that Amanda and I have been riding this bike a little bit. She rode it some the other day. We were out uh, cruising around, and we got it off-road just a little bit in some gravel area, and it performed well because these nice big knobby tires. And um, you know, We had it out on the sidewalks and the streets, and I like riding here in the neighborhood. In this current stance right here, um, the handlebars are pretty low for this bike. And it's a little bit of a reach, you know, just for me, it seems like the handlebars are just a little far out there. So it is a longer bike. So just be aware of that. But it is a more aggressive stance. So if you like that kind of leaning forward uh, stance, then that's perfect. If you don't, and if you're like myself, where you like a more upright uh, riding position, then it's a real easy fix. You can get a stem riser for about $10, which is gonna raise the, the handlebars up and we can have a more upright riding position. So real easy fix, if that's your preference. Now cruising around, we're just using the torque sensor. We're in pedal assist one, and we'll just see how fast we can go. Right now we're at 10 miles an hour. I can put some more effort into it. It's pretty heavy push, but I can get this thing up. Now we're going to like 15 or so, but I'm really kind of fighting the bike at this point. I mean, it takes, it really feels like a traditional bike at this point. It doesn't feel like I'm getting anything out of the motor, but that's because we're still in pedal assist one. Once I bump it up to pedal assist two, then you can feel some relief there and you can feel that the motor is helping you out and it's giving you some push. And with that, I can go ahead and get this bike up to where are we at now? 16, 17, going on 18. Still getting a good response out of the motor. And there's 19. Good pedal resistance at 20. I don't have to worry about any ghost pedaling. There's none at all. So we're cruising around now. Still getting a lot of, a lot of help out of the motor at 20 miles an hour. So that's real nice. But if we want to go faster still, we can go ahead and bump it up in that third pedal assist level. Still no ghost pedaling, I'm up at 22. There's 24, there's 25. No ghost pedaling, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty fast cadence right there. So I'll show you what that looks like. That's 20. That's 23, 24. There's 25. So this bike is capable of 28 miles per hour but and you can get there as long as you can move your legs fast enough you can get there all right we're gonna get out here on our little country road and let's just do a throttle test so this will be throttle only we're still in pedal assist three there's five there's ten there's fifteen Nineteen. There's twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. And it doesn't want to give me anything more there. It looks like we're going to stay about twenty-two. Nope. There's twenty-two and a half. There's twenty-three. So we are having some headwind today too, and I'm a heavy rider, so that could be affecting it, but yeah, I'm only going to get about 23 and a half out of it. There's 24. bike is balanced pretty well I mean I can turn loose to the handlebars and and there's no significant shaking or anything like that which is good all right let's get turned around here going through the grass on a relatively flat ground the bike does okay he through here you can hear the motor kind of whining up a little bit but it's pulling us through it just fine I think the company says that the bike is capable of doing like a 30 degree slope I don't have any hills here, so I can't really test that feature. 
all we have here in my area is mostly flat ground. We're going to go ahead and get the bike up here to about 20 miles an hour and we're going to try the brakes. And right now. All right, so we didn't lock up the brakes, but uh, we're still able to stop pretty quick. So overall, I think this bike is priced well at $12.99. Uh, for what you're getting here, I mean, you're getting a torque sensor bike, which is real nice for at that price point. It's a large fat tire. You got name brand tires, you got name brand brakes. Uh, the bike looks great. And you know, it performs pretty well here. If, uh, if you like this style of riding, you know, more of aggressive ride on this bike. Uh, it is app controlled and you know the app works pretty well it, it does I mean they did a pretty good job with the app there we had a little trouble getting connected initially that's mostly user error but once we've kind of figured out the app it's pretty easy to use so that's a nice feature free there currently only sells two models the Eden and the Sega the Eden is the step through version the Sega is the step over version here and we're uh, looking forward to seeing what they come out with in the future and see if they come out with some more models. Free Dare is a newer company. They got started uh, last year on Kickstarter where they were uh, soliciting funds from investors to, uh, in order to produce these bikes. And they came through for all their investors and everyone who signed up early and pre-ordered bikes, uh, they delivered. And everyone seems to be happy with those. Uh, haven't uh, had to use customer service or anything at this point, but uh, it sounds like uh, Free Dare is on top of their customer service from the, the few people that have reached out and has needed to contact them for one reason or another. So that is always good to hear because you don't always get that out of these e-bike companies. So good job on Free Dare for staying on top of their customer service. Guys, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what questions you have. Drop them down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And, you know, if you're thinking about the free dare, let me know. Let me know. There'll be a link down below. You can click on and go get some more information. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I will see you guys in another video here real soon. Ride safe.